Hey everyone, Brandon Harvey here. And before we get started today, I wanted to tell you once again about a survey we're conducting here for Sounds Good. It's a simple survey that will help us learn more about you, no matter how long you've been a listener of Sounds Good or how frequently you listen to the show. If you would, take a few minutes to go to gradient.is slash podcast survey and let us know what you think. There are some questions about your listening habits, what other podcasts you subscribe to, and what you like or don't like about the show. Again, that's gradient.is slash podcast survey. And along with the survey, if you do like what we're doing with Sounds Good, would you mind going to iTunes and leaving a short review? It really is the best way to let other people know about the show. We really appreciate the support. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, let's jump into the show. Hello, hello, Brandon Harvey here with this week's episode of Sounds Good, the podcast where every single Monday I sit down with an inspiring person and talk about happiness, overcoming struggles, and living a life of intentionality and wonder. Today, I am so excited because we are having a conversation with Frank Warren. In 2004, Frank Warren started an art project called Post Secret. He asked strangers to mail their secrets that they'd never shared with anybody else to his house on a postcard. The game plan was to put a few of the postcards he received into an art exhibit, but he just kept on receiving more and more and more. So Frank started a lo-fi blog where he shared a handful of the secrets every single week. Now, Post Secret is the largest advertisement-free blog in the world, and he's received more than a million postcards from strangers. I'm sure it's even more than that now. And I've been following Post Secret for years, so I'm super excited to share this conversation between Frank Warren and I. Now in my conversation, we talked about some pretty heavy topics. If you're listening with kids, maybe plug in some headphones or skip this episode. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into this. I am on the line with the incredible Frank Warren. Frank, welcome to Sounds Good. Brandon, it's great to be with you. Man, we were just bantering beforehand, and uh, I feel like we're already buddies. I've been following along with your blog for years and years and years now, and it was so pleasant to just pick up the line and just hear a friendly voice on the other side. This is going to be so much fun. I agree. I think there's something about the the time and place where we live where there are these opportunities for creative people to find new ways to tell the everyday stories and secrets of noble everyday people. I think um, what I do is kind of like giving voice to the unheard. And I think in a similar way, you kind of tell these untold stories and and shine light on on people doing everyday work and and working in a way that's optimistic and positive and pushing through. Man, well, I I really appreciate that. Yeah, that actually makes me curious. You kind of just described yourself as a little bit of an unknown person, but at the same time, your blog is, you know, the most popular advertisement-free blog on the internet. You've got millions and millions of followers online. How do you reconcile this idea of you know, you put something out there that is so popular on a weekly basis. You speak on campuses across the world, but also you probably don't get stopped in the grocery store every day. <laughs> yeah, the post secret guy is pretty secret. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I stumbled across this idea, Brandon, of creating a safe, non judgmental place on the web where anybody could mail me a postcard with their secret. And as long as it was true and they'd never told anyone else before, and a lot of them come with artwork and decoration, I put them on the web. And really, it's those authentic voices that I think have spoken to so many people globally. The Post Secret website, as you alluded to, has had over 750 million hits. And there are six best-selling books. And I travel and speak at at schools, at at museums. I've spoke at the White House last year. And I think what it is, is, is not really my story. But by all these people sharing their stories with me, it gives me this sense of connection that I can convey kind of the, the, the reality that all of us are struggling with, but people might not be talking about it. It's almost like I've, I've got this microscope and I've been looking through it for 10 years and, and over a million secrets. 
and it really invites me into this world that we all share but we don't see. Mm. And if I can tell that story, I think that's what's most compelling. That's amazing. I love this idea that you are elevating these stories that aren't being shared and that's what we all crave. And I think that's a huge part of why you've been successful. And yeah, there's this idea that, you know, the post secret guy is a little bit unknown and I want to kind of peel back a few layers if you don't mind. And, you know, you've been doing this for 10 years, more than a decade, but of course this hasn't always been what you've done. Bring me back to the pre post secret days. What were you doing? What were you doing besides opening up your mailbox and receiving lots and lots and lots of postcards? <laughs> yeah, there definitely was a pre-life. Um, I was a student at Berkeley, and when I graduated, my wife and I put all of our belongings in a truck and drove to Washington, D.C. to start a business there called Instant Information Systems. Really? And I was, yeah, I was an entrepreneur for like 20 years, um, retrieving medical information for a set of clients that I had. Uh, we lived in kind of a, a boring suburb of Washington, D.C. called Germantown, Maryland. Uh, we had a, a dog and a daughter. Um, it was really just kind of a, a typical life until Post Secret took that life and turned it upside down. And I think a few things maybe led, led me to that. One was, before I started Post Secret, I was a volunteer on a suicide prevention hotline. Essentially... Mm listening to people's deepest secrets at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m. And so in, in some ways that didn't just prepare me for the project, but it prepares me for these live post-secret events where audience members oftentimes will stand and share their secrets live for the first time. And you never know what, what confession is going to emerge from something wow. like that. Um, additionally, my work was, was very lucrative, but it wasn't gratifying. It was pretty tedious. It was non-creative. So after work and on weekends, I would pursue these little postcard art projects. And for me, I, I am very optimistic about how when you're not satisfied at work, um, we all have options. You don't have to quit your job and take some crazy risk to try something new. Totally. We, we can all get up an hour earlier before work and start typing on that nozzle we want to write. Or we can practice whatever we want to, the musical instrument on the weekend, and, and that's what happened to me. I would carve out in my spare time uh, these little opportunities to pursue creative, prankish art projects. And Post Secret was the third one I did, and it really just caught fire and spread virally around the world, and my life hasn't been the same since. And so you started this thing. You, at one point, you kind of had to flip this switch and say, this is a thing now. Like, this is not a hobby. This isn't an outside project. This is a thing I'm going to pursue. And at that point, what did you expect to come from this? And what was your goal? What an interesting question. Yeah. And I remember how risky it did feel because, I mean, I was a 40-year-old, you know, suburban father, small business owner. And here was this crazy project where I was inviting strangers to write down a secret on a postcard and mail it to my home. And there came a point where I had to, I had to kind of decide who I wanted to be. And I can tell you, I know this is going to sound strange, but it would have been more difficult for me to jump into who I am today as kind of being the post secret guy. If I'd had a lot of friends and neighborhood connections and just people who saw me a certain way. Mm. But I've always been pretty independent, and I think partly that helped me make that jump because it was a big jump. I can tell you, when I started Post Secret, you know, my wife didn't really get it, but she supported me. Uh, my mom called the idea diabolical. <laughs> it was a very <laughs> risky sort of idea, especially thinking in terms of, well, can you make a living doing that? Totally. And so when I finally did sell my business, and dedicate my life really to the secrets of strangers 40, 50 hours a week. It was a risky move that I made, but I can tell you, um, I'm so happy I did. I feel like my life has greater purpose than it ever has before, and I would never go back the other way. And again, just to touch on something I mentioned earlier, it wasn't because I took some crazy risk and quit my job and, yeah. and let go of one vine and, and reached for another vine and had nothing for a moment, no. I just built Post Secret on my old lifestyle, and when it started to blossom, um, I was able to then uh, make that transition in a much easier way. 
Yeah, and that's especially important because you had responsibilities. You had a wife, you had a kid, you know, you it would be irresponsible for you to just take this crazy jump, pursue this passion. And while that kind of can feel glamorous and that can kind of feel exciting, I think it was a really smart call and it it, it paid off in the long run and you didn't have to spend your first few years of post secret trying to milk it for all the money you could get out of it. You were able to just let it be what it could be. Yeah, I think there's a couple of points that there that are important. One is when I started Post Secret, I was pretty well off financially, so I didn't have to make decisions against the interest of the project in order to pay my bills, for example. So in, in a lot of ways, that's what allowed me to grow the project so large is because I didn't, for example, take that quick money of people paying me to put ads on the website. In the 12 year history of Post Secret, I've never taken a dollar to put an ad on the Post Secret blog, even though it's been seen by, like I said, it's got over 700 million hits. So in some ways, you know, people could look at that and think, well, that was a foolish uh, pot of money that you passed up on. But by doing that, I was able to build a stronger relationship with the audience of people coming to see these secrets. And for the people mailing me their secrets on postcards, I think they felt a deeper sense of trust with me because they saw that I wasn't exploiting their stories for commercial profitability. I wasn't monetizing their secrets. Totally. So what that allowed me to do is is leverage the idea and website in a way that didn't just bring in an an income for me, but also set it up for long-term health and stability. So for example, I didn't get that advertiser money, but I was able to sign a five book deal with a publisher and and come out with these books that I feel like are archives of Post Secret and really serve the project. Totally. And, you know, I, I didn't I didn't make money in other ways, but I did find a way to travel uh, to speak at colleges and conferences. And last week I spoke at a library and kind of bring the project to life in a way that serves the interest of Post Secret and also allows me to maintain the life of the project in a way that, that supports me and my family. That's brilliant. And I love that you just had the opportunity to be intentional about it. And I think that's something I've probably learned from following your blog for so long. You know, Post Secret is valuable because of that. And I think that's a lesson that I don't know, we can all learn from. Well, I think we all have to draw that line somewhere. And I've certainly had other types of ads on the website. I've, I've advertised the Post Secret books for sale, for example. Last week, I had my home in Germantown advertised. Yeah. <laughs> I'm selling the Post Secret house. I'm now in California. So if anybody wants to have uh, the headquarters of Post Secret, it's on the market now in Germantown, Maryland. It's so amazing. I saw that. I, I read the listing. It's so fun. And I want to get into that more in a little bit. But first, I want to, I just kind of want to be able to visualize this experience um, of you going to your mailbox in the mornings. And so first question, what time does the mail come every day? I'm sure that you know by now. Well, the mail is now forwarded to me here in California. So it goes to my Germantown address first, but I have a really good relationship with my post office there and I have premium forwarding services. So then it all gets forwarded to me out to California. And, you know, 10 plus years later, you'd think I'd be bored with these secrets, but no, every day I'm still like a kid waking up Christmas morning, looking to see what's under the tree waiting. I think these... uh, postcards are just so precious and it's always a surprise when I go to the mailbox. Man, and and I like to imagine that you walk outside uh, with slippers and a giant bag. Is that at all accurate? (laughs) Um, Well, sometimes I get more than postcards. Sometimes the secrets arrive on what's called naked mail and I've had Mm. secrets mailed to me on seashells and a license plate and flip-flops and a knife and a potato. And it's just, yeah, it's amazing the kind of things that I pull out of my mailbox. I don't need a, a bag. I can usually just hold it all in my hand, um, but it's it's a fun walk to the mail. Sometimes, you know, oftentimes I actually go to the mailbox early, even though I know pretty much when the mail's delivered just because I'm anticipating it. That's so funny. I love that. I really love that. And then, so you take it inside and then do you read them all immediately? I do. Yeah, I, I receive every postcard. I read every secret. I keep all the mail. Um, it's it's a pretty amazing p- 
pile of postcards I have now. It's actually all the postcards are on exhibit at the Postal Museum at the Smithsonian in Washington, mm. D.C. And there's a pyramid that's taller than me. It's like a ton of confessions in there. So, yeah, I, I read them every day. And then usually Saturday, I go through and I select about 12 for the website and I arrange them and, you know, re-edit them and just craft the right kind of rhythm of the secrets telling a story about us. Amazing. And are there some secrets that have just come to be the most common secrets you've come across over all this time? Ah, oh, common secrets. Um, the secrets themselves can be as varied as the people who mail them. I don't think mm. I'll ever run out of kinds of secrets, but there are some that are familiar and I, I have received more than once. I get some secrets about peeing in the shower, bathroom related <laughs> secrets for sure, never get old. One I got not too long ago, <laughs> this one kind of lodged in my mind. I'll share it with you, Brandon. I'll lodge it in your mind too. <laughs> it was a secret that said, sometimes when I shower with my boyfriend, I pee on him and he has no idea. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So there's that, the hidden life of people that we share the planet with. But I would say another common secret I get, and this secret doesn't just come from the U.S. This secret comes with postmarks from New Zealand and Dublin and Hong Kong. And these are secrets from people telling the story of how they are someplace on that journey trying to find that one person who they can tell all their secrets to, mm. who they can be their full and true and whole selves with. I see that secret expressed dozens of different ways on postcards every week. And I think it tells our story. It reminds us that secrets are the currency of intimacy. That's beautiful. Secrets are the currency of intimacy. And you, for so many people, I mean, the, the pitch for Post Secret is, Send Frank a postcard with a secret you've never told anybody else. And, yes. and so you, you as somebody who reads every single one of these postcards, you are the secret keeper. You are the person who holds all of these secrets. And what does it feel like being a secret keeper? What, like, does it do anything to you? Well, I was never that kid in high school, for example, that everybody told their secrets to, that's for sure. And maybe that's one of the reasons I, I was attracted to this project, mm. for that sense of connection. I do think in my own childhood, though, I was very well aware of family secrets that we kept from others. And later on, I discovered family secrets that had been kept from me. So I think there's this kind of deep fascination to secrets that I've had. Um, and then also, once I started the project, I realized that I had secrets that I was keeping from myself. And secrets that were coming from strangers, artfully decorated on postcards, were inspiring me to uncover parts of who I was and share them on postcards and mail them to myself. And I've actually got one of my secrets in each of the Post Secret books. That's amazing. Has anybody ever been able to pinpoint which secret is yours in the books? Sometimes at speaking events, there are book signings afterwards and people share with me and oftentimes I'll share with them which secret is mine. That's really cool. That's really cool. I would imagine also that keeping so many people's secrets has got to humanize people. You know, if you're in line at a grocery store and, the, you know, the person in front of you is just being really annoying or something, you can, you, I would imagine it kind of gives you a perspective of being able to say, well, that person has a secret that they're not telling anybody. And they're, they're just like me and they're just like all these other people that write to me. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it increases a sense of empathy that you have for others and maybe even compassion for secrets within your own life or conflicts. Mm. You know, I think a, a lot of us feel like we don't have any secrets in our life. But if you dig a little bit deeper, I think in some ways we, we hide those feelings from ourselves. I know in my own life, it's been kind of interesting as I've uncovered deeper secrets in my life and talked to my wife about them. And sometimes I share them at post-secret live events. Um, I, I often have discovered, and now I share it with people, that beneath those deep secrets, there's always deeper secrets waiting for you to find the courage to uncover them mm. too. So I see telling secrets as a lot of things, including um, self-revelation and self-awareness and self-actualization. You know, I, uh, 
I was meeting with a, a counselor here in Nashville, and his name is Al Andrews, and he is a counselor for specifically musicians because we're in Music City, and he's just kind of found a niche doing that. And I was just getting together with him over lunch and having a conversation with him, and I was like, Al, explain to me what you do because it's kind of weird that he is so niche and he's so specific. Um, and he says, Brandon, oftentimes people they keep these secrets bottled up within themselves that they don't even realize they're bottling up. And my job and my goal is to help bring those to light so that people can flourish and they can grow. And, and I like that idea of like when you're able to acknowledge these truths about yourself and, and put them out there, whether publicly or privately, you know, with somebody that you're paying or somebody who you love, the beautiful things happen. And I think that's, that's fascinating. And that was the first time I'd ever really thought about that with him because I too have thought, oh, I don't have any secrets. I was the guy growing up who, when everybody was gossiping and sharing secrets, I was just like, I don't really have any. Like, I, I feel like I share everything. But, you know, the more I grow and the more that I try to become better at self-care and and taking care of my mental health and, and grow intellectually, you know, I'm realizing more and more that there's so much that, I can do to kind of dig deeper and understand myself on a deeper level. Wow. Uh, a lot of complex ideas there about secrets and confession. Um, I agree with almost all of it. Um, I totally think that secrets can be transformative. They can change who we are sometimes just by not telling them to others, but exposing them to ourselves, coming out to ourselves first. Um, and the, the idea that secrets can be used, not just to, connect to our deeper selves, but to connect with others, I think makes them even more meaningful. And so many of the secrets that you receive are deep and heavy secrets. Does dealing with and talking about deep topics come easily to you? I know that you talked about how you'd had experience with the suicide prevention hotline. And I would imagine that that plays a role in being able to deal with these deep topics. But before that, or even now, you know, what does that look like for you? Because I know for me, it doesn't come supernaturally to talk about these deeper, heavier topics, but it's something I'm intentional about trying to do. Yeah. When I was younger, I had some difficult struggles and, and some, yeah, some painful times in life. And oftentimes I felt like I was going through those alone and it was a struggle. And later on through this project, I'm reminded every day that we all have conflicts and humiliations and challenges, and we all suffer. And I know some people come to the website and they read the secrets, and you know there are happy ones and romantic ones, but there are also heavy ones, and they might say that the heavy ones depress them or make them feel down, but they don't have that effect on me. I've been reading these postcards for 12 years, and when I see a secret describing somebody's struggle, for me, I feel this sense of connection hmm. and, and solidarity and I, an understanding that, you know, there's only one thing worse than suffering, and that's feeling like you're suffering alone. And through this project, I think it reminds us that that each one of us has at least one secret that could break your heart. And if you can feel that, I think we could all share a greater sense of empathy and understanding and maybe peace in the world. So the guy you were talking about in Nashville, too, he makes me think of how a lot of our greatest artists, I think, in some ways are courageous secret tellers. If you think of, for example, you know, Chris Rock or Louis C.K., these guys are telling difficult truths Absolutely. that they've kind of come across and when they share these, these stories, the only reason they're successful jokes is because they make us laugh out of recognition. And sometimes the funniest part is how we feel a conflict with that feeling. We're not quite ready to admit it about ourselves, but we can see it in somebody else. And that's what makes us laugh. Absolutely. And there's, there's so much power in showing up with this idea of, oh, this is a comedy show and then giving people truth. I think that something we all crave is truth, uh, but nobody's necessarily going to sign up for it. You know, and that's, you know, this podcast, I've talked about this before on the show, but, you know, there's a little bit of a bait and switch. We talk about how this is just going to be like an optimistic, fun, awesome time. And the podcast cover is a goofy cartoon of me. But the truth is we have some pretty deep conversations and we talk about things that are important. But if I had a podcast called, let's talk about deep, important things and sometimes talk about hard things, 
you know, nobody really wants to hit the subscribe button on that. But I think that that's something that we all crave. And so, you know, I, I wonder if, you know, something about your blog is, you know, oh, cool. I get to like see the lives of other people. Like I get to see people's secrets or wow, like the art that people put into this is incredible. But I think what people stay for and what people really connect with is this idea of saying me too. Wow. That person shared that thing and I didn't realize it till now, but I feel that way too. I would imagine it's kind of that. Brandon, you really hit it. Yeah, the idea of me too comes up again and again. I, I get that through emails. I get that at live events. People read these revelations on the postcards and in many cases, their first reaction is, I, I know what you're going through. I've been there. It's okay. Don't feel like you're alone. And I think that's the most powerful message coming from the project. You know, you, you go to the website and you read five, six, 20 secrets at postsecret.com and then you come across one that seems like it's, it's, it articulates a struggle you're going through in your own life and it's said better than you could even say it yourself. And yeah. that's when you realize that you're not alone, you're connected to this stranger who you'll never meet. But just that understanding makes, makes the world a little bit smaller and makes all of our hearts a little bit warmer. That's incredible. Do you ever meet the people who submitted these cards? I mean, obviously you've met people in general who have submitted cards, but has somebody ever said, hey, this card was mine or reached out and, and specifically, you, you've kind of discussed a specific idea? Yeah, it happens all the time in, in funny ways, in romantic ways. Uh, when I was speaking at the Smithsonian a couple of months ago, there was a live marriage proposal that happened at a, a post-secret event. <laughs> Another time in... Brighton, England, um, I shared this secret on the screen that had come from the app and it was a woman's secret telling her story of struggling with suicide. And I also shared some other secrets that came anonymously from strangers in response to hers. And I talked to her after the event and she, she said that when she saw her secret in my presentation, she whispered to her best friend who was with her, you know, that one's mine. And then she said she was worried for the rest of my talk because she didn't know how her friend was going to respond back to that. She'd never told anyone before. Wow. But at the end of my talk, her friend whispered in her ear, I was one of the people who responded back to you positively. We just didn't know it because it was all anonymous. No way. So, I just got yeah, goosebumps. It was this wonderful connections. Yeah. I wish I could show you the images too because they were powerful pictures. Man, that is incredible. I think that's one of my favorite things about what you do. And, you know, I haven't had the privilege of seeing you at a live event yet, but I just love the way that people can connect over all of this. I think that anything that brings people together in a way that brings healing is, is going to be an incredible thing. And I think that you do that amazingly well. And it's amazing that that this didn't just become a trend and then fizzle off. You know, it could have become a crazy popular blog and then fall apart. Uh, but it's kind of remained a community and a movement and it's it's stayed around for more than a decade. That's It's incredible. I'm so happy that Post Secret wasn't just a, a hot website that spiked and then went back down. But no, it's had this life of over 10 years through the web, through the books, through the speaking events, through the Facebook page. And it has little to do what I say, and it has all to do with the power of these secrets. Mm. And Brandon, I might just hijack your show right now <laughs> and read some of these secrets. Oh, please. I love the it. The voice of the people trusting me with their stories. Can I jump right in? Oh, please do. Thank you. So this is a postcard that has a picture of a suitcase on it. And this one reads, I planned what I'd take with me when the time was right. I knew exactly what to pack while my bruises healed. Ooh. Here's one uh, picture of a baby wrapped up in, in clothing with a content look on her face. It says, Dear birth mother, I have great parents. I found love. I'm happy. Here's one that has a picture of a, like a Walmart happy face with a, a hand holding up the middle finger. It says, before I mail a bill I don't want to pay, I stick the check between my butt cheeks, then I put it in the envelope. <laughs> Here's one. This one came from Hawaii on a postcard. It says, I married someone I didn't love because I wanted to wear the dress. Wow. This one has a picture of a, a woman, woman's shoulder. 
It says, <laughs> it says, I pulled a muscle in my neck while masturbating. I couldn't move my head for three days. I told my husband it was from moving furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one. This one it came on a photograph of soldiers. Uh, and this one is looking at the camera with face paint on. And this secret on the photograph says, when I started my new job, I found your picture in my desk. I hope you're still alive. And then this last one I'll share here is a, a note that's taped to a postcard. And it says, four years ago, I wrote this suicide note and I'm still alive. Unreal. That's so powerful. Yeah, so it's like these different voices coming in through the mail and I get to share them all back out with the world and, and tell our story in a new way. And it just feels great to be a part of it. Yeah, and those are the stories of a half dozen people, but it's also the stories of hundreds and hundreds more people who are saying, me too. Me too. And it also shows the great diversity in these secrets. You know, we think of a secret as, as one thing, but no, it's many things. It's a story of hope. It's a love letter. It's a confession. It's an unused suicide note. It's an unrequested love. It's, it's all kinds of manifestations that remind us that we're not alone with our struggles, our communication, our search for that person we can tell all our secrets to. You use the words like we're not alone in our struggles. And we've mentioned this a few times in the podcast, but you've had a huge uh, impact on the world of suicide prevention. Of course, you volunteered before you were doing Post Secret, but you've also raised tons and tons and tons of money for suicide prevention. And on your website itself, it's got a link, if I remember correctly, to Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, why is this so meaningful to you? And why do you think that it connects so well with your audience? Well, in my personal life, I've had my own struggles with suicide. I've lost a friend and a family member to suicide. And through this project, I see secrets that remind me that so many of us every day are struggling with self-harm in a way that goes beyond the statistics. You know, statistics like this year, a thousand students in the U.S. will take their own life in college. Statistics like over the past one year, five year, 10 years, more American soldiers, men and women, have been killed by their own hands than by the enemy. Uh, the statistics are even more staggering when we realize that as the Surgeon General said, Suicide is the most preventable form of death in this country. We know what we can do to, to help it. We know what we can do to, to work against it. We know that by attacking the stigma and shame of mental illness that can prevent people from asking for the help they need, we know that can save lives. We know that by talking about our feelings of isolation or depression before those feelings wall us up, we know that can save lives too. And so what I've tried to do through this project is through fundraising, and uh, collectively, the post-secret community has raised over a million dollars for suicide prevention, wow. but also through resources. Community members have voluntarily created the most complete and comprehensive database of suicide prevention hotlines and text lines in the world. And it's a, a wiki document right now. And so we've tried to attack it from different, different ways because through these postcards, people are sharing that secret. And in some ways, it makes me think that suicide is America's secret. It's a secret that we keep from ourselves. And by not facing it and not talking about it, it just gets worse. And it's such a real thing. And it's so important that we're able to get rid of that stigma because I think that's the big problem is everybody, everybody, we, we had a guest previously on the show and she said that she said, everybody has mental health. And it's just a matter of whether it's healthy or it's got a cold or, you know, it's just like physical health. And we just need to be a little bit more open and conversational about this because it's the stigma and it's the shame and it's the staying quiet that creates things that are as difficult as suicide. Brandon, more than once I've received emails from students who say the only reason I'm alive today is because my RA or my classmate, or my professor asked me how I was doing at just the right time. Mm. It's a reminder that sometimes the smallest actions we take can have the greatest impact in other people's lives. And just saying those simple things like, hey, I know you're hurting, you can talk to me anytime. 
or before you do anything, call me. I'm always available to you. I've been there too. Here are some resources that helped me. Sometimes that's enough to save another person's life, the life of a friend or a family member. Man, that's incredible. And I'm I'm so inspired by the way that, you know, you've used your community to to fill people with a lot of hope and a lot of connection and really build a community, but also to take that community and make an impact in the world beyond just this community. And so I, uh, I really applaud that and I admire that and I thank you for that. Well, thank you. It feels great to be a part of it. Jumping back into your life, you mentioned earlier that you are now in California. You're having all your mail forwarded from Maryland. So tell me about this transition. Are, are you going to be the post secret guy forever? Are you like, what does that look like? <laughs> Brandon, you're ready to take over for me? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, I'm not ready to let go either. Uh, about uh, a year ago, uh, my wife told me that she had, uh, you know, supported me in, in Germantown at that address for long enough. And she's ready to move back and be closer to her family. So our, our daughter graduated and I uh, was able to move back here to California. We're about a, uh, a half a mile away from my wife's family and she loves it. And, that's and the exciting. weather here could be better. So that's a positive for sure. And we have, I think, engineered a way to keep the project going and alive. And I, I hope the secrets never stop coming. It's, it's a part Good. of my heart and I feel this connection. So uh, yeah, I, I hope it lasts all uh, forever. That is so exciting. And people can buy the house, right? My Germantown house is for sale right now. You can you can tour it. You can see uh, the basement where I used to keep all the postcards and all the little <laughs> catacombs of storage. It was quite an operation there for sure. That's amazing. We had amazing. to build an extra room just to keep all the postcards. I love that. I hope that the right person buys it because that's going to be really, really cool. Yeah, me too. Man, so every single episode, I love to ask a few questions to every single guest. And so if you don't mind, I'd love to just jump into that part of the show. Sure. It's time to stump Frank. Amazing. <laughs> so my first question is, how would you describe the kind of person that you most admire in the world? Hmm. I would say somebody who has struggled, somebody who has earned their soul through suffering and now has found a way through their work and their life story to heal the community. That's beautiful. And I feel like that's especially powerful because in the midst of struggle, I don't think anybody's ever, I think it's really, really hard to think about this idea of I'm going to become stronger because of this. I'm going to get through this. Only kind of in hindsight do you get to experience that. But What an important way to say it, Brandon. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that when those humiliations and defeats occur, they feel random and arbitrary. But later in life, we can look back and see that those were the crucibles that changed us, that that made us become the person we needed to be to do the work only we could do. Yeah. Do you think that it's possible? This is something I've been thinking about because I'm somebody who has experienced relatively little struggle in my life, um, which, you know, I, I would genuinely love to experience more struggle, but at the same time, the moment that struggle hits, I'm sure I won't be saying that, you know, and, and it's that I want the outcome of struggle without the struggle. Is there a way to to steer into struggle or to struggle hit every single person at one point? Or is it, is it possible to live a struggle free life and then regret it? Like what is, I don't know. What do you think? I think those are all great questions. And I think in many ways, all of us here in America kind of don't even know what real struggle is, right? Like there are places on the planet that we can't even understand the sacrifice that people have to go through. Yep. So maybe a, a good way to approach it is just to identify with with the pain that we've had in our own lives and the pain that we've seen in our friends and family and make sure that pain isn't in vain, that there's meaning and purpose behind it and we're able to convert it into something that's positive and, and helpful for all of us. Make sure that your pain isn't in vain. I, I think that's really, really powerful. My second question is, what are you consuming that you love right now? Um, well, one thing just in terms of entertainment, uh, there's a show called Atlanta that I'm digging right now. Man, I've been um, waiting to check that out. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's being promoted as a comedy. It feels anything but, but it feels like some just real meaningful artwork that uh, I love watching. That's good. Um, 
I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of podcasts. Me too. So I do a lot of traveling. And as I travel, I discover these new podcasts and new stories. And just like yours, I think there are these new ways for us to tell stories that are super compelling, that allow for this deep sense of intimacy. And I'm just not only learning more about the people who are telling the stories, but there are just amazing stories that are finding new light and currency through podcasting. So I'm just excited about that that art form as well. There's so much incredible stuff with podcasting. We, you and I were talking about it before the show started, but there's something so powerful about um, hearing people's stories and having these connections and, and listening to these things while you're driving your car or washing dishes or showering or whatever it is. And shout out to anybody who's doing those things right now. You'll have to tweet me and let me know. Uh, because that's weird and hilarious, but there's something special about that, and it's it's kind of inviting these people into our into our personal lives in a weird, bizarre way. In our life, we feel like it's just natural, you yeah. Know, like, oh, the web's natural, podcasting's natural, but no, it's 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 freaking revolutionary. <laughs> you know, the idea that I was born in a time where using the internet, I could. I could type some words, I could scan some images, and I could reach millions of people. The idea that each one of us basically has access to a, a worldwide printing press that we can use for free. And it's all up to us to find the right arrangement of words to send out into the world and change it. And the same thing's true with podcasting. Brandon, I can tell you like years ago, I, I hate to tell you this, but there would be gatekeepers preventing you from doing what you're doing today. But with podcasting, it's so democratic the barriers of entry are so low that all this great content is created and thereby we're, we're curating this content based on value. And because your voice is being heard today when it wouldn't have been years ago, uh, it's, it's adding to that, to that symphony, to, to the joy of people telling new stories in new ways. And because the gatekeepers are no longer there, we get so much more diversity of voices. You know, my favorite thing is digging into I mean, while we're on the topic of podcasts, I love digging into podcasts that are from people who are not like me. They're not white dudes. They're not straight. They're not Americans. You know, they're people who live totally different lives than mine. And before I never would have been able to hear their voices. And now these are people who they stretch me and they make me think in different ways. And I think it's one of the most valuable things that I've gotten to do just as a human trying to grow and and become a better human. What an important point. You know, I, I didn't think about that, but you're right. And it's just the opposite of what you think about when you think about social media and Facebook, where you're connected to the same kinds of people, the same voices over and over. It becomes like this grand echo chamber. But with podcasting, you can introduce yourself to new worlds, to new stories, to new people. And it doesn't come naturally, but if you're intentional about it and you make yourself do it, it ends up being really, really valuable. And I think that you grow a lot from it. Yeah, well, even just the TV show Atlanta that I mentioned is completely outside of my experience. Totally. But maybe that's one of the reasons I dig it so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm a few hours from Atlanta. And uh, and so I'll visit from time to time. Maybe I've got to go to Ikea or I want to stop by and visit a friend. And even me, as a dude who can visit Atlanta, I'm having a completely different experience than the lives of the people that... Atlanta, the show is based on, you know, it's life is a choose your own adventure and you can choose to kind of stick within your bubble or you can choose to step outside of it. Yeah. Okay. So my last question is this based on the ways you've chosen to step out and live your life differently. What's one thing you'd encourage someone else to do in their own life? So not necessarily everybody needs to be Frank Warren, but everybody should follow down kind of a, a path and a trajectory of their own in the same way that you followed down the one uh, that was kind of in front of you. And so what kind of advice and wisdom would you give to people who, you know, want to do something similar? Well, I don't know if this is a direct answer to that question, but I, I can say that based upon what I stumbled upon in my life, I feel as though one of the most uh, noble and, and powerful things we can do while we're on this planet is is to not necessarily tell our story, but to create a place where others can tell their story. Mm. And if you can do that and create this conversation that then you can enter and, and share your story as well, 
that is a way where you can really uh, reach a maximum number of people, have maximum Im impact. And I can tell you too, when Post Secret broke, it kind of broke down all the gatekeepers in a way where uh, if, you know, when I wanted to try to assemble the postcards in book form, I didn't have to search for a publisher or a literary agent. They saw the audience that Post Secret had and they were contacting me. And so if there's a way that we can kind of tell these untold stories in the same way that you kind of shine light on people with every episode, I think that kind of sharing and that kind of communication is the most powerful on the planet. Absolutely. Create spaces where people can share their stories. And that can be done in a living room, you know, by creating an inviting and safe environment. That can be done on the internet, creating a platform that can be done through so many different ways. And I think it's totally okay to start small with a few dozen postcards and who knows what that could turn into. Yeah, what a great way to put it. I love the idea of, you know, so many different ways to start on that project. You can be a photographer like uh, Humans of New York. Mm -hmm. You can be a podcaster like your podcast. You can uh, go through postcards. You can solicit people, tell their stories. You know, you can invite people to call your phone answering machine and leave a message. There are so many creative ways in the real world, in the digital world, that you can collect meaningful stories. And if you can build that relationship with strangers so they trust you, they trust you with their deepest confessions, feelings, beliefs, fears, uh, that's, that's gold. And it's not just gold because it speaks to you, it's gold because you can arrange it with other people's stories to tell this larger conversation about what all of us are going through. That is absolutely beautiful. Frank, if people want to follow along with your life and also the incredible world that you've created within Post Secret, where can people do that? Uh, the easiest way is just to go to postsecret.com and check out the website. There's Post Secret on Twitter and Facebook too. And you can always mail your secret to Post Secret. Can I hijack your program again, Brandon, or, and go out with three more postcards? Oh, please do. I love it. This first one isn't actually a postcard. It's an envelope, and the person wrote their secret on the envelope. They wrote, before I go on a trip, I write a letter to my family just in case I die. Wow. This one has a picture of uh, Goofy with the face over. It looks like Snow White. This one says, I shroomed at Disneyland and only Goofy knew. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, sometimes I get people's comments and feedback after they see a secret on the web. And this one got a response from somebody who said that they related to the secret. They said that they went to Disneyland and they did shrooms too. And he said they were just coming up off the shrooms when they got through the gate and Goofy bounded up to them and started playfully freaking them out. And the guy <laughs> said, I leaned in and I whispered in Goofy's ear. I said, Goofy, listen, not now. We're tripping. And he said, Goofy leaned back towards him and told him, guess what? I'm tripping too. <laughs> oh my God. Brandon, here's my last one. I'll let you go. This one has a picture of a couple under a tree. There's a heart. The secret was mailed to me from Pasco, Washington with a cancellation mark. It says- That's where my grandparents live. I grew up going to Pasco for every Christmas. There's always a connection. The stamp is the cat in the hat too. Amazing. This one says, I didn't enlist to escape you. I enlisted to pay for our wedding. Will you marry me? Wow. Man, Frank, this is incredible. I am so inspired by everything you've created. I'm so inspired by you and this conversation. This, is, this was awesome. I loved this. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Brandon, it was a joy talking to you. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you. Keep being awesome, Frank. All right. Sounds Good with Brandon Harvey is part of the Gradient Podcast Network and is created in collaboration between me, Brandon Harvey, and Gradient. Check them out at gradient.is. That's gradient.is. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who tuned into the podcast this week. If this is your very first time listening, subscribe to the show to get a new inspiring story downloaded straight to your phone in your sleep every single Monday. I subscribe personally on iTunes, but you can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Every single week, I share show notes from the episode at brandonharvey.com slash podcast. And this week, I'm sharing a bunch more postcards from Post Secret. So go ahead and check them out. You're going to love them. 
If you really connected with this episode, we should do two things. One, let's totally talk about it online. You can find me and reach out on Twitter and Instagram with the username at Brandon Harvey. That's Brandon with an E-N. And two, go ahead and leave a review on iTunes. It's an amazing way to help people find the show. And with that, that's a wrap for the podcast this week. I'll see you online and I'll talk to you next week when we get the opportunity to learn from another inspiring person. Sound good?